Hey, Colin Smith here. Welcome to this week's episode, and I'm going to show you how to customize your Wacom pen so the pressure sensitivity is customized exactly for you. So this week I'm going to show you how to customize your Wacom pen. So not only is the pressure sensitivity customized exactly for you, but you can set up the brushes panel to work exactly where you would like. All right, so as you can see here, there's a bunch of different types of pens. So I'm just going to start with the regular pen and let's look at the process of doing this. The very first thing you want to do is you want to head over to the Wacom site. So just Wacom.com and you'll see this site there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to scroll to the bottom under support and we're going to we're going to go to product support, we're going to click on there, and now you're going to go into the different ones. I'm going to show the different types of tablets. I'm using a Wacom Cintiq uh, 22 Touch. So we're going to go to the Wacom Cintiq 22 Touch right there, and it'll go to that page. So whichever one you're using, you'll go there and it'll show you the latest drivers. Now these drivers are pretty much the same for all the different tablets. So whether I'm using the Cintiq or I'm using the Intuos Pro, it doesn't really matter because all the different product support is built into the driver. So you just want to make sure you're using the latest driver, which I see here. I am using the latest driver here. I'm on Mac. If you're on Windows, you'd be using the top one. Mac, do that one. And you just want to download it and install it. A lot of people don't even bother doing this. And a lot of the problems you have with your tablet are actually because you don't have the latest driver or you don't even have the drivers installed. All right, so once we've got the drivers installed, what we're going to do is we're going to go and have a look at the driver. So let's go down here to System Preferences. On Windows, you'll just go to the Windows version of that. And then you're going to go to Wacom Tablet. So I'm going to click on the Wacom Tablet, and it's going to show me the different things. So this is the device I have right now, which is the 22 HD Touch. Um, I also have various Intuos's, and those would show if I had them plugged in right now, which I don't. And then we've got different tools. You can see I've got the three different pens here. I've got the Grip Pen, the Art Pen, and the airbrush. I'm not going to get into all of those. I have a more comprehensive video that I did with Wes Maggio where we talk about this in super in-depth that's available at Photoshop Cafe. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the grip pen because this is the one that most people are going to have. And you can see there's our pen here and here's the tip feel. We can change the tip feel from soft to hard and we can change it. So if I was actually to work on it right now you can see as I'm just pressing my pen if I push it all the way in, it shows maximum. That takes a lot of effort to actually push there. If I barely touch it, it's registering pretty nicely. But I'd actually like to have that where I'm not having to press quite so hard. So I could change it here. If you go to firm here and then you just touch it there, you notice you push real hard to make it work. If you go to soft, I can just barely touch it. And now it's, it's doing all that. So we can do it that way. Or well, what we can do is we can go under the customize here and under the customize we've got the interactive pressure profile and this is really cool. So this is by default you can see it's kind of like it looks like a curve inside of Photoshop where we've just got the line going across and so you can actually try in here and you can move it and I can see I'm going pretty gentle there there's still a pretty decent line to get a super thin line it's really hard I'm getting a dotted line before I'm doing it and sometimes I like to do a thin line. So if we were going to do that, if we were actually to take this pen pressure and move it over this way a little bit, notice now I can go thinner and I can get that line and still a little bit. So I can actually take this down and adjust this here. And now I can get a very, very thin line. Look at that. And same thing up here. Let me just reset that just for now so you can see what's happening. And at the other side here, this is the full on. So I've got to press really hard. I feel like I'm pressing my pen through the tablet to do that. If I pull it back this way, less effort and I'm going full tilt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that one down just a little bit because I like to have a, a fine pressure here and I don't want to press too hard to get the thick pressure. So I'm actually going to pull that one in a little bit and maybe down here as well. So it gives me a nice thin threshold. I like that. So now we can adjust this. If I take this down this way, if I go super light and then I go super hard, it works quite nicely like that. Now, if you pull it this way, you'll feel a difference. I'm going light. It's hard to get a super light touch and it's hard to get more variety. So going this way creates more variety in the brush. So you get a little bit more dynamics in there. And by doing that, maybe I can reduce the amount of the lightness so I can start there. I'd like to actually pull it in a little bit more so I can go super light. Look at that. I can create that light line 
push it in and then go nice and thick. All right, so by adjusting that little graph there, you can get that set up for how you like to work. Now, right now, it's only showing thickness, um, but remember this pressure sensitivity um, also matters for opacity. So sometimes I like to have a very, very fine touch, which is why I kind of pulled this in a little bit at the bottom here, and I don't want to push so hard up there. A heavier-handed person would use this slightly different. So now I'm just going to click OK, and now that's set up. So let's go to the next section. Now we're going to go to Photoshop. We're going to jump into the Brushes panel, and I'm going to show you a couple of the most important dynamics inside the Brushes panel. Here we are in Photoshop. I've just got a blank document. I've actually got an image under here, but we're going to look at that in a second. So what I'm going to do is we want to open up the Brushes panel. So we go under Window, and we open up Brush. And this is where we're going to be working. Notice nothing's working. We have to select a brush first, so let's grab a brush. And now you can see the brush presets. Okay, so let's have a look at the settings in the brush. We're just going to select a basic brush here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off these dynamics here. And then what we've got is we've got hardness and softness. So we'll turn the hardness all the way up. And I've got black for the brush. I've got opacity set to 100. And let me make sure all these are turned off. And I'm just going to make the brush bigger by hitting the right bracket key. And I'm just going to draw across here. Notice I just get a straight hard line. Okay. Now, if we change the hardness all the way down, notice how this changes. If you look at it here, you see it has a hard edge. Pull it all the way down, now it has a feathered edge. And if I draw, we have a feathered edge. So that's a soft edge brush. No pressure sensitivity yet. Okay, so the pressure sensitivity that really matters is two. We're going to start with the transfer. So if we go to transfer here, notice that this still looks that way. So under transfer, if we decide to change the opacity jitter, which I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn this to pen pressure. Notice now it fades on the ends. And also, if I go here now and I press light, I get a lighter uh, line. If I press harder, I get a harder line. So I can change my opacity. And we'll make that bigger if you want, just so you can see it. So there's our opacity. So I can build that up or down. Notice, though, that it doesn't change the thickness. So let me turn the transfer off now. And notice, once again, it goes back to there. Now I'm going to turn on Shape Dynamics. And on Shape Dynamics, we're going to go to Size Jitter, and we're going to change this to Pen Pressure. Notice now it shows a taper. Right? So Light Touch, Heavy Touch. Notice no opacity is changing because right now thickness is set only to Shape Dynamics. Notice how that looks. Now if I go back to Transfer as well, and let me just select all, and I'm just going to fill this with uh, white. And then we're just going to paint again. Notice now thickness and opacity change at the same time. So some people find that quite irritating, and they find it difficult to paint that way. So you can control them independently, and a lot of the time I like to do that. So we can go here, as you can see, we can change the shape or the transfer. There might be times when you're trying to use the menu bar at the top, and it doesn't seem to work. And let me explain to you why and how it works. So let's have a look here. If we look at the top here, you'll see that we've got uh, three buttons here. We can adjust the airbrush, which will do flow. We can adjust the opacity, and we can adjust the size by clicking on them. So let's look into the brushes panel here. So if we look at the brushes panel, what I'm going to do is make sure these are turned off. And then I'm going to force these on. So these are all on now. And uh, just bring the pen closer, and that little explanation mark will go away. Pen pressure, good. Okay, so now I've turned these on and they're off up the top. So let me just draw here. So if I look, I've got opacity and I've got size. You can see that. Okay, so what if I turn on opacity here? It doesn't do anything. Turn it off. It's still there. What about size? Turn size on. Nope. Turn it off. Still working. And that's because they're turned on here. And this is because some brushes want certain things by default. So if you're going to want to use uh, different dynamics from up the top here, when you use your brush, make sure that with everything deselected that you turn them off here. And now watch this, watch this here as I turn on opacity and off. Turn on size and off. Now I can control them separately. So just by clicking here, now I can do opacity. Or I can say, hey, you know, let's not do opacity, let's just do size. See, we can control it now. So the thing you need to watch, though, 
is when you change brushes, if we go to a different brush, these are going to change. So what you can do is if you want to turn these off, like we've done there, then make sure to turn off, you hit that little padlock here, you can lock that in. See like shape dynamics is now locked off. Transfer, it's now locked off. So that means that I can turn them on and off here. But now if that little padlock icon going down, these are not going to change when I change brushes. So if I go to different brush presets, like here, for example, and I've now I've got a different brush. Notice though, I can turn these on and off from here uh, because they're locked in. Otherwise, when I change brushes, notice that these are not changing. Let me turn them off. Notice that these are, won't change between the brushes. See that? Because they're locked in, they're never going to come on no matter which brush I take. If, however, I don't have these locked in, let's turn the shape dynamics off, transfer off, unlock it. There we go. Now, notice as I change brushes, you'll see these come on with some brushes and off of different brushes. So that just gives you a little bit more of a predictive kind of a response to it. So the things to remember, one, install the driver. Make sure you get the latest driver. Number two, set up the pen so the pressure suits your particular hand and the way you like to work. The number three, go into the brushes panel and set up the dynamics and lock in and lock off the dynamics that you like to use. And then once you've done that, then you can go in and you can do all kinds of different types of re, uh, retouch. You can also save these as brush presets just by clicking here. You can save any of these as a brush preset with the dynamics. But let's have a look here. We're going to turn this off. So say we're going to do some dodging and burning really quick. I'm not going to get into dodging and burning. Uh, how I set these up because I've got another tutorial on that. Um, you can find that on Photoshop Cafe or on YouTube. So I would just grab the uh, black brush, grab a brush here. And what I want to do for my dodging and burning is I want to make sure that the brush is selected. So we've got our brush right there. And then I'm going to make sure that these are turned off. Okay, now with them turned off, make sure these are turned off. And then what I like to usually do is just use opacity. And I don't usually use the size for when it comes to dodging and burning. So I'm just going to go into my burn layer, hit the three key to drop it down to about 30% opacity. And we're going to paint with black. So let's do that right now. We're in there. We're going to drop that down to about 30. Then and I could just kind of, you know, do some dodging and burning if I wanted now, just to kind of contouring my model, you know, just gently chiseling out the cheekbones, just kind of giving you an idea more of a, you know, what I would do for a workflow. Make sure this is set fully to soft as well. That's good. Hardness is all the way down. Good. You know, and maybe I might put a little bit under there, a little bit under there kind of thing. You know, just kind of shaping it out. You get the general idea. So you'd be kind of doing stuff like that. Maybe up in the sides here. Let me contour around here a little bit, just kind of adding, adding some shape. And then, you know, once we've done that, maybe come in a little bit there. And then you might go to the white, hit the X key, You're going to go in there, hit under the dodge layer. You probably lighten under the eyes a little bit, just kind of, uh, and then maybe just up here on the bridge of the nose. So not really doing a lot, just kind of giving you an idea of how this might work. So what we've done here is if we turn off the dodging and burning, you can see there before and then after we've just added a little bit more dimension to the face. Wasn't really a retouching tutorial. I got plenty more of those. I really just wanted to show you how to set up this pen and customize it to your individual touch. So if you like this video, uh, hit a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel on YouTube at Photoshop Cafe. And uh, I'm going to have a new tutorial every single week. And uh, if you like this, um, add a comment. Let me know what you think about it. If you've got any questions, be happy to answer them. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.